Who is Mystery Babylon and what does she represent? Revelation 17 through 18 contains a prophecy which depicts a harlot woman riding astride some kind of beast or political system. Of course, we realize that both the harlot and the beast are merely symbolic. But who is this woman and what does she represent? Good question. I believe that while the true church is the bride of Christ, the harlot, Mystery Babylon, is the apostate church and the bride of the Antichrist. The harlot represents everyone who has yielded to the Antichrist political government and one world religion of the last days. But before I run too far ahead of myself, let's examine the following 10 points taken from Revelation 17-18, through 18, which will help us better identify Mystery Babylon. Point number one. A harlot is symbolic for an apostate nation or people of God. So according to the Bible, a harlot is a reference to a nation or group of people that were once devoted to God but later became apostate. In other words, they fell away. The best example of this is in Isaiah 121, where speaking of Jerusalem, it reads, How is that faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. You see, what we need to realize is that the early church gradually apostatized from the true faith of Jesus Christ and the teachings of the apostles until eventually it morphed into the biggest religious and political institution that ever existed. Today, we could easily recognize this institution as the Roman Catholic Church. So is it possible that the harlot of Revelation 17 and 18 is indeed the church at Rome? You will have to decide this for yourself as we continue to examine the remaining nine points. Point number two. The harlot sits upon many waters. Revelation 17.1 I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now there's really no mystery about the meaning of this verse, because the interpretation of this passage is given to us in verse 15 of the same chapter. Notice, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. According to this passage, the harlot is said to be a multinational entity which is comprised of people from all over the world. So here's a question. Does the Roman Catholic Church fit the bill? Is she a multinational institution? Obviously, the answer is yes. The Roman Catholic Church has roughly 1.2 million members worldwide. That's a pretty significant number. And by the way, the very name Catholic, or Catoli in Latin, means universal. So the Roman Catholic Church is a universal church. Point number three. The woman sits on a beast with seven heads and ten horns. Revelation 17.3 So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Earlier, in part one of this series, we identified the fourth beast of Daniel 7 as being Rome, with its ten horns representing the ten original barbarian nations of Europe. So obviously, we're dealing with the same beast here, namely Rome. But what about the seven heads? What do they represent? Thankfully, Revelation 17.9 helps us identify the meaning of the seven heads belonging to this beast. Notice, And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Did you catch that? The seven heads are symbolic for the seven mountains occupied by this harlot. Now I want you to be careful not to miss this. This clue here is extremely important. Because the only city in the world known as the City of Seven Hills is Rome. In fact, to see this for yourself, just try typing into Google the phrase, The City of Seven Hills, and the first result you'll pull up is Rome. So what does this mean? Remember that according to scripture, a harlot is symbolic for a people of God who were once faithful, but fell into apostasy. Now we know of only one significant apostate church that exists in Rome today, and has existed there for nearly 2,000 years. Yes, that's right, the Roman Catholic Church. So could it be that Mystery Babylon is a symbolic depiction of the Roman Catholic Church? Many believe so, including myself. Point number four. The harlot rides atop a religious political beast full of names of blasphemy, Revelation 17.3. This point here is yet another indicator that the fourth beast in Daniel 7, Rome, is the same beast mentioned in Revelation 17. After all, Daniel 7.25 did predict that Rome's little horn power, the Antichrist, would speak blasphemy against the Most High God. So what do you think? Does the Roman Catholic Church qualify? Is she full of blasphemy against God? One must look no further than the popes of Rome to answer this question. The popes are commonly referred to as Holy Father, His Holiness, Vicarious Filet Dei, 
which means in place of the Son of God, Pontifex Maximus, or the Great High Priest, Vicar of Christ, etc. In my opinion, there can be no greater blasphemy on earth than the Roman Catholic office of Pope. Point number five, the harlot is arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Revelation 17.4 Now this point here is another dead giveaway. Few people realize that the two primary colors of the Roman Catholic Church are indeed purple and scarlet. Just take a close look at these pictures. As you can see, the bishops wear purple and the cardinals wear scarlet red. Now what about the gold and precious stones? Is this something that can also be pinned on Rome? Actually, you don't have to tour the Vatican long before immediately noticing the vast amounts of golden gems which adorn its many ornate churches and shrines. So this too is a fitting description of the Roman Catholic Church. Point number six. The harlot rules over the kings of the earth. Revelation 17:18. According to Daniel 7:23, the fourth beast, Rome, must dominate the whole earth through the rule of the Antichrist. It is a fact of history that the Roman Catholic Church has been ruling Rome through the popes since the end of imperial Rome. Only when Christ returns will Rome, along with its little horn power, the Antichrist, be given over to the burning flame. Notice, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast, that is the fourth beast, Rome, was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Daniel 7.11 So unlike what modern historians would have us believe, Rome never lost all of its political power and will continue to rule the world until Christ returns. But just in case you doubt me, here are some short clips to help you see the reality of this in our everyday news. Mr. President, final question. Yes, sir. You said famously, when you looked into Vladimir Putin's eyes, you saw his soul. Yeah. When you look into Benedict XVI's eyes, what do you see? God. Good way to end the interview. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Yes, sir. Now, in conjunction with what I just showed you, I highly advise you to read the historical research of F. Tupper Saucy in his book, Rulers of Evil, which contains indisputable evidence that the most powerful government in the world, the United States, is fully controlled by Rome and has been since its earliest founding. Like it or not, America is merely a puppet state of the Holy Roman Empire. Point number seven. The harlot is full of abominations and filthiness of fornication. Revelation 17.4 According to Revelation 17.4, Mystery Babylon is the source of all kinds of sexual perversions and immorality. Now what you need to know is that the Catholic Church is responsible for more pedophilia and child sex abuse cases than any other institution in the world. The Roman Catholic Church has been indicted in thousands of child pornography cases in organized sex trafficking and continues to fill up the headlines daily with these cases. And why do you think that is? Could it be because the Catholic Church promotes the damnable doctrine of celibacy? The devil has used this very thing to perpetuate all kinds of homosexuality and pedophilia within this apostate church. Just notice this article here by Catholic publication LifeSite News which states the following. An associate professor of religious studies at John Carroll University warned as far back as 16 years ago that studies suggested the percentage of Catholic priests who were homosexual could be as high as 50%. That's roughly 16 times more the percentage of gay men in the general population. Now everyone knows that Hollywood is a cesspool of filth and immorality. But did you know that there is substantial proof that the Roman Catholic Jesuits fully control Hollywood and the entertainment industry? For further support of this claim, please check out the book Jesuit Hollywood by Sean Wilcock. So have nothing to do with Hollywood, because ultimately their aim is to seduce you through the entertainment medium 
and to numb your ability to exercise spiritual discernment while they roll out their antichrist agenda, which they are doing even now. Point number eight, the harlot is drunk with the blood of the saints. Revelation 18, 24. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Let me read to you the following quotes so you can appreciate the magnitude of Rome's enormous slaughter of true believers. Notice, from the birth of popery in 606 to the present time, it is estimated by careful and credible historians that more than 50 million of the human family have been slaughtered for the crime of heresy by popish persecutors, an average of more than 40,000 religious murders for every year of the existence of popery. History of Romanism by John Dowling, pages 541 and 542, New York, 1871. And here's another quote by William Lecky, that the Church of Rome has shed more innocent blood than any other institution that has ever existed among mankind will be questioned by no Protestant who has a competent knowledge of history. It is impossible to form a complete conception of the multitude of her victims. And it is quite certain that no powers of imagination can adequately realize their sufferings. W. E. H. Lecky, History of the Rise and Influence of the Spirit of Rationalism in Europe, Volume 2, page 32, 1910 edition. So don't be fooled, friends. Rome has persecuted Christians at the beginning of the Church Age, throughout the Middle Ages, through the implements of fascism and socialism, and she will do so again at the end of time if you truly believe Bible prophecy. Point number nine. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Revelation 17.5 In 251 AD, Cyprian of Carthage wrote, He can no longer have God for his father, who has not the church for his mother. Since the days of Cyprian, the Roman Catholic Church has officially been known as the Mother Church. And what you must know is that within this Mother Church, Mary has been elevated to a higher status than Jesus Christ. But let's be clear, the Catholic Church doesn't really venerate Mary. In all actuality, they worship Isis, the Theodicus of ancient Egypt. How do I know? Very simple. All Catholics refer to Mary as the Queen of Heaven. In fact, that's her official title. But remember, Isis was also known to the Egyptians as the Queen of Heaven. That's why in Revelation 18.7, Babylon says of herself, I sit as a queen. Mariology or Mary worship is simply a repackaged form of Isis worship. Point number 10. The kings and merchants of the earth are waxed rich with the abundance of her delicacies. Revelation 18.3 For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So what this verse means is that all of the world's political leaders, along with the top businessmen, have become wealthy on account of their involvement with the Roman Catholic Church. In other words, they are directly benefiting from the agenda of the Vatican. But let me show you the following article to help bolster this claim. Notice, Pope Francis to address gathering of world's wealthiest and most famous, Rome, Italy. Now, according to this article, all of the richest and most powerful men in the world are openly submitting themselves to Pope Francis, the current head of the Roman Catholic Church, by helping him forward his agenda for world domination. Let me read to you the following excerpts so you could see for yourself how deeply committed they are to implementing the Pope's market of beast system. Notice, Fortune Plus Time, Global Forum, Working Group Solutions. And here's what it says. The following is a letter from the editors of Fortune and Time to Pope Francis, delivered on December 3, 2016. Your Holiness, on behalf of Fortune and Time and the distinguished delegates participating in our global forum, we are pleased to present to you the enclosed report. The report presented here is a result of the work of some of the world's most prominent business and thought leaders who have gathered for this meeting. Our goal is not only to talk about these problems, but also to take specific actions to address them. The chief executive officers who have gathered with us come from companies that collectively employ more than 4.7 million people. These companies operate in every country on earth with networks that range from the inner cities to the smallest villages. And so at this forum, top executives from some of the world's largest companies, as well as prominent non-governmental labor and civic leaders, have sought to answer the Holy Father's call to action, forging a new social compact for the 21st century. And now listen to this. Here is what they plan to do about it. Companies will support initiatives to produce digital identities 
for the one-fifth of global citizens who lack one, and therefore a shutout of financial systems. Digital financial technology, fintech, and the spread of mobile phones have been transformative in expanding financial access to hard-to-reach populations. Still, there remain obstacles to achieving the World Bank's goal of universal financial access, UFA, by 2020. So there you have it. The world's top political leaders and businessmen stand to benefit immensely as they begin to implement the Vatican's global agenda. These companies will be responsible for setting up the Market of Beast financial system, wherein, according to Revelation 13, no man may buy or sell without the Market of Beast. Truly, all of the world's top politicians and businessmen are in bed with the Vatican. So whether you believe it or not, the Roman Catholic Church controls the global economy and the buying and selling of all things. But what you must know is that Rome uses the military might and economic power of the United States, her most powerful puppet state. And therefore, we must expect the U.S. to play a major role in the completion of this global agenda in the coming days. Now finally, there's good news to all of this. Because according to Revelation 18, this whore, the Roman Catholic Church, will be destroyed by fire just before Christ returns and the saints of God with him. Very shortly, we, God's people, will be vindicated when his wrath is poured out unmixed upon the unfaithful harlot church and all of her allies. But all of those who have refused to unite with Mystery Babylon will remain to witness it. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give to her. For she saith in her heart, I sit as a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Amen.